Hey everyone, it's shed update time. Do you see what's different in here? So, did you figure out what was different before the intro? Yeah, that funky little box right here. Let's come up here. This is a very simple solar setup. Yes, everyone's been having fun with the solar. This kit was originally in a tote that I would use for camping, but I haven't done tent camping in years. So it's been literally sitting down in my basement. I would top off the battery once every few months or so, because this is a 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And the battery's been perfectly good. So instead of it just sitting in the basement doing nothing, I figured let's do some sort of crypto thing with it because this is, again, it's a simple system. It's not a grid tie, it's nothing else. It's just an MPPT charge controller going into the battery with load output up to 20 amps. So originally this had an EP Ever MPPT charge controller and with three 100 watt panels, I could never get over 225 watts roughly input on a fully sunny day, panels angled perfectly to the sun. Finally had enough of it, spent a little bit more money and got myself a Victron, that's what that blue thing is right there, Victron 100 slash 20 MPPT charge controller. Oh my God, freaking night and day. This thing boots up in like two seconds, ready to go, and the and the algorithm that plots the uh, voltage and amperage curve to get you the most amount of wattage is so much more responsive on this unit than the cheap Chinesium one. So looking at the panels at the top here, you can see those are three 100 watt Harbor Freight panels. There's a little stands on there, you catch them on sale every once in a while for $99. Normally they're $129, and they have little stands that can stick up for like when you're camping. Unfortunately, they come with some weird, stupid cable, so I rewired them for MC4 connectors. Which you can see, here's, what's that? That's negative running through here over to the main wire, and this is positive running on over here. Surprisingly, I haven't had any leak issues yet with this folding on over and rain hitting it. I do eventually want to get a true cable gland that goes through the side of the building. That's gonna be a winter project, at least one of the winter projects for this solar setup. So with this setup, I'll show you the software here in a minute. And I've peaked out at like 285 or 288 watts with these panels sitting flat. They're not even at the right angle for the sun. They're just sitting on here flat and they're mounted directly to the roof because I didn't want them to blow away. I need to get more wood, I've been lazy. So, and I'm still getting almost the rated wattage in peak sun. So everything is running out of a cigarette lighter, 12 volt to USB adapter and down here, this is only maybe like four or five watts. This is my Duino coin miner. And then up top, if you remember from one of my other videos, I got three Orange Pi 5s sitting back there and they're just churning away 24 seven mining Varus coin. So let's start up the software and show you exactly how much power I'm pulling. So the Victron unit has Bluetooth capability and comes with its own app. And here's the front page for it first before we click into it. it gives you your battery voltage, how much solar you've made today, uh, power, state, and load current. So let's click in here. Loads up. And you can see right now we are making 20 watts worth of solar. There is no direct sun on the panels yet but you can see the voltage of the panels. You can see it fluctuating around the current. Then we come down to the battery. And you can see the voltage on the battery, the amount of current right now it's pulling 0.8 amps and it's currently in bulk state. Load output and you can see 2.4 amps or 31 watts. Those three orange pies and the Duino coin miner usually take anywhere between 31 to 35 watts. If I go to history, you can see each day the consumption. On average, I use about 760 watt hours, running 24 seven. So I use about three quarters of the battery capacity, but you can see on my yield, this is my solar yield. I usually charge about 870 watt hours 
on a good sunny day. Um, yesterday it got reset only for the fact that I shut the unit off and it kind of erased it accidentally right before I started recording this video. Today we haven't done anything yet. And if I keep scrolling down, you can see it's done pretty good. Every once in a while, the battery really charges up good. And then you get this gray area, which is absorption, which means the battery is basically fully charged, just topping it off type of deal. And Pmax, you can see here, the maximum amount that we got from the solar panels, 240 watts, 238, 285. It actually does it. I could never get this on my old solar charge controller. And you can see so far from buying this charge controller, probably about six weeks ago, I've actually generated 35 kilowatt hours worth of solar. So one of the big problems I have with solar at my townhouse is my townhouse is oriented in the exact wrong direction to get solar. It should be oriented this way, not this way. So if I pan up here, you can see the sun is, where the heck are you, sun? Oh, it's right there, duh. Kind of hard to see in the camera. Yeah, it's like right, no, it's right there actually. Yeah, yeah, right there. So the sun is right there behind that tree. It hasn't even hit the open area. So I only have from here to just a little bit over there, each day of solar irradiance. Did I say that right? <laughs> I only have about four hours worth of sun that I can actually get out of what, 10, 12 hours a day. So I got to limit how much power I can use. And that's why I keep it at about 36. I might add one more orange pie in the future to this. And that will basically be the capacity of this unit, mostly because I only have a few hours to charge the panels each day. If I was oriented the other way, I could do a lot more of this system, but I'm limited by what I can do with my location. So that's basically what I'm doing for solar. If anyone wants updates, I'll do updates every once in a while, but it's pretty much self-sustaining at this point. I think I've actually had it lose power, like actually shut off the power to the loads because the battery got too low, maybe once or twice in the six weeks I've had this out here running so far because it was cloudy or rainy for like a day or two and it actually drained the battery down. Thankfully, I have it set to shut off the output load a little earlier than the actual bottom of the battery. So I keep a little bit of reserve just so I don't do 100% death of discharge on the battery itself. And the um, BMS in the battery says no. So since I'm also not gonna probably use this for camping anymore, projects for this is get the cable gland so I can get a proper entrance for these two power cables. Gotta do that. Got to mount the solar panels a little better of an angle to catch a little bit more sun because like I said, I only have a four hour window to get sun each day. And I think I'm gonna take it out of this weird contraption mounting thing and put it on a regular wall mount, put it on the back somewhere. Again, these are all projects I'll probably do in winter. So let me know what you think of my little modest solar setup. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think I'm crazy? Well, actually wait, no, I am crazy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.